I was born in the midst of a revolution, and I survived. And I've grappled with revolutionary dynamics ever since. The biggest gift of this trauma is the gift of anticipation. And this is why I'm here today. Most people associate with a revolution, a sudden event. They hear something on the news about riots, and then the next thing they hear is that the government has been overthrown. But revolutions don't take place just like this. It's much more like you take an early morning walk into the forest. You might feel some humidity, and then it seems suddenly you're in the middle of a fog. But fog evolves gradually, just like revolutions. And when we look at the first industrial revolution, it took 100 years to fully evolve. So now we are at the time of big shifts, with major breakthroughs in science and technology, structural changes in politics, economics, and society. And this is the very definition of an industrial revolution. And at the same time, we are at the verge of the exponential age. The first superhuman revolution, where man and machine merge, and where the artificial intelligence becomes the next step in human evolution, and at the same time, we are building for the first time intelligent, autonomous, technological organisms. Just like we humans are intelligent, autonomous, biological organisms. Sounds like science fiction. Well. When we look at our Internet of Things devices, like our mobile phones, they are just like the sensory organs. Blockchain is the nervous system, the brain, the body. Big data is information influx. And artificial intelligence, well, it's intelligence and a certain type of consciousness, the one that we have programmed. So when we look at artificial intelligence and how quickly it evolves, by the example of AlphaGo, Go is a highly complex Asian strategy game, and AlphaGo is an artificial intelligence that, for the first time, beat one of the best players in the world in 2015. In 2017, it was able to beat five of the best players in the world simultaneously. But the development didn't stop there. The second generation of this artificial intelligence only needed four days into existence to crush its predecessor, 100 to zero. So when we compare that to human intelligence, it is just like that. The first generation needed three years to go from an IQ of 150 to 700, and then the second generation needed only four days to go from an IQ of 700 to. Seven thousand? We actually don't know. It's beyond our metrics. But what is more remarkable than this is, they say for Go you need intuition, and the second generation only had the rules. It learned the game all on its own, only with the rules. So what does that mean for us? What type of rules do we want to program into the artificial intelligence? The first law of robotics states robots may not harm humans. But what about our man-made economy? Doesn't it harm our mother, Earth? And what about corporate social responsibility? Doesn't it imply that corporations are anti-social? So in the exponential age, we need new rules, new paradigms, and a new type of economy, an economy that's beyond profit maximization, an economy that's purpose-driven. Eleven years ago, a group of people, neither institutions nor corporations, but a group of people, implemented a framework for a new type of economy. They introduced the first international currency, independent of banks, the Bitcoin blockchain. 
Blockchain is the technology, and Bitcoin is its token. A token is the reward for developing, maintaining, and keeping a system alive. Just like frequent flyer miles schemes, where the miles are the reward tokens for the customers to keep the airline alive and use it. But because of the hype, blockchain tokens like Bitcoin became an object of speculation, and because of that, most people only associate a hype with Bitcoin and the blockchain. But blockchain can do much more than that. You can create a whole type of new economy, a token-based economy, because you see, you can tokenize anything on the blockchain, any object, any idea, any purpose. So imagine an economy where you get paid for riding the bike instead of using the car. Imagine an economy where you get paid for where you put your attention, which advertisements, which websites. Imagine an economy where you get paid for creating and sharing quality content online on social media, true news, science fiction. Well, these blockchains actually do already exist, but we're just at the beginning. And it needs the people who work on these type of things. You see, you don't have to be born in the middle of a revolution to be experiencing one. You are in one right here, right now. But it's a different one than the one most people talk about. So, who will be the leaders? Of this revolution, who will fuel it? Well, definitely not the ones who believe this is all just a hype. Einstein once said, "I don't have any particular talents, but I'm passionately curious." And by this standard, everyone has genius inside, and it needs genuine curiosity. To be willing to understand these new type of technologies, and once we understand these new type of technologies, we can understand its full potential. So I believe it needs the curious and futuristic minds to challenge the rules, to challenge the paradigms, to challenge the status quo. Once upon a time. In the village far, far away, they used to live a seer. He was envied by the ones in that village who wanted to maintain the status quo. They wanted to ridicule him because the people were liked him for his wisdom. He was popular. So the ones who envied him goes up to his friends and says, "You know what? Next time." Everyone is gathered around the seer. I take a bird in my hand and go up to him, and say, "Oh dear seer, I have a bird in my hand. Is it dead or is it alive?" So if the seer says the bird is dead, I open my hand and the bird will fly away. But if the seer says the bird is alive, I will squeeze my hand and the bird will be dead. So in any case, he will be wrong. So that day comes, the man goes up to the seer with the bird in the hand and says, "Oh, great seer, master of wisdom, I have a bird in my hand. Is it dead or is it alive?" The seer looks at him, smiles, and says, "This, my friend, is in your hand. It's in our hand." It's in our hands what we do. I believe it's the curious and futuristic minds who will rethink, reimagine, and reinvent the future where we tackle our biggest challenges. 
It is them who will be the leaders of this revolution. So, if you believe in what I say might be true, I believe that one of those leaders is you. <laughs>